Good morning. It's another market day. I'm Vivian of the Midnight Crafters. You are joining me this weekend. It's supposed to be a beautiful day. It's supposed to be a little warm. High of like 90, 92. I'm going back to the farmer's market. We're going to see how it goes today. I know last time I went, I only sold four items. So let's see if we can double that, maybe even triple that today. How are you doing, my crafty cousins? I know we have, it's been a while. But hopefully we have a good time today and I get a lot of content for you. I brought my four foot table. I'm going to try to do the Z formation for my table setup just to see if that changes up how uh, people receive my booth and it might boost my profits. I've noticed, I'm not saying that it's a direct correlation, but I have noticed that whenever I use the Z formation for my table setups, I tend to sell more items as opposed to just like two tables or like a U shape. So we're gonna try that today. If this is your first time experiencing doing crafts, markets, crochet, and you're just curious to know how to set it up and what to do, what sells well, best sellers, or just how to do markets in general, join me. All right, everyone, I thought I'd take this time to just give you a rundown of how I set up my booth. Usually I start with the canopy. I got this canopy from Amazon last year. It's pretty easy to put up by yourself. Sometimes I have people to help me, like I have my sister that comes sometimes, but most times I prefer to do it by myself simply because I am very efficient at what I do. Now, as you can see, I am getting it in place. I have two parking, parking spaces that I am allotted to use. So I usually put my canopy in the center and then I align everything accordingly. As you see, I'm pulling out the legs to get it all centered. And then I go into the middle and pop the top. And then, you know, get it nice and even as best as I can and you see how easy it is for me to just raise it up and set it up no problem I'm able to do that with all the sides oops as you see sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't but when it gets uneven it's very easy to recalibrate and recenter it accordingly and you just snap it in place and there you have it the canopy is up now it's just fine tuning it and making it according to my preference and getting everything together. All right, from here, you'll see I am now grabbing my weights. Now, your weights can be whatever you deem as appropriate for you. For me, I got these anchor weights uh, from Amazon. In fact, most of these things I have listed in my Amazon uh, store storefront. If you wanted to go check that out, I'll have it in my description box below. But I bought these items strictly because this farmer's market had stipulated that you have at least 40 pounds weighing down your canopy because this is a very windy area as you can see there is a hill with the, the street right there at the hill and a lot of times the cars go by they cause a big gust of wind so they want you to weigh down your canopy so i bought those extra weights on top of the ones i originally had so i'm pretty secure as you can see, I am putting up my six foot table now. Pretty easy to just do by yourself, as you can see. Now, if you recall, I said I'm going to do the Z formation simply because 
I've seen in the past, my Z formation typically does better for me. Oh, here you see I forgot to align my canopy with the curb. So I'm trying to push it back accordingly after I've already got everything situated. And you know, I'm just walking it back as best as I can. You know, even though I've been doing this for a couple weeks now, I still make mistakes and we just move along accordingly. There we go. Get everything aligned, get everything situated. We're good to go. Reset and okay, back to it. Getting the table all set. Next, I use the four foot table and the four foot table usually goes in the middle because it's the shorter of all the tables and that aligns very well to allow for the spacing in my 10 by 10 canopy so that everything can fit accordingly. And then finally, I set up my last long table. Usually it's two six feet and one four foot, but I kind of cheat a little bit. This table is a five foot table. And see, I struggled a little bit with it because I thought it was already locked. Now that I have it locked and ready, now I can really set it up and ready to go. I thought I wanted to do inverted U, but I stuck with the Z. As you can see, it's a Z shape here. You see the pattern? I show you again, a Z. And yeah, that's pretty much how it goes. And get my chair set up for me. A chair for my sister, a chair for my turtle. Now this is my secret weapon. That is insect repellent, natural insect repellent. It's made with essential oil, like peppermint essential oil, and it keeps those ants away. When I say away, you see me spraying that curb. There was like an anthill or something that got agitated before I got there. So I just sprayed it and I did not have issues with ants or anything at all. The only caveat is it is a barrier to crawling insects. If it flies, it's probably going to get past it because it can't really avoid those. But I usually put up my fans and those usually help with the flying animal, you know, the flying insects. But this spray here, I use it every day time i am at an outdoor event and it works wonderfully again linked in my amazon storefront and of course gotta get my table covers my tablecloths that i've had since the beginning it is time for me to update and get new ones and i probably will after these next events that i have for the farmer's market only because these ones have had their due my white ones are done for they have a hole in them so i'm definitely getting new white ones and I might, you know, want to update the black ones only because I want something different. I'm thinking about going with a different design altogether, but we'll see how it goes. As you can see, my sister is joining me now and we are going to get the finishing touches all squared away for setting up, you know, just the aesthetic parts of my booth. All right, the time is officially 8.06. We have been set up since 7.52. I say that we are making better and better time each and, each and every time we do this. Uh, you know, in the first couple of hours, things are slow to set up. We still have some vendors still setting up. We're gonna, <laughs> as you can see, the humidity is getting to my hair. So as this video progresses, you're going to see it shrink more and more. 
beauties of natural hair. But let's get the day started. Oh, the humidity has gotten to me. Uh, it is 9.16. Little update. I've sold one item, sold a whale, one of the green whales that I've been trying to get rid of forever. I just sold it for like $5 because I'm tired of holding on to it. I'm ready for it to go. But I've gotten a lot of compliments on the mermaid. I've gotten a lot of compliments on the turtle. And people are surprised that I made these by hand. Is that a thing? People don't make the crochet items by hand anymore? I, I'm so out of the loop. I don't know what's going on. But the event is starting to pick up, so we're getting more people coming in. So let's keep the day going. How y'all doing? It's now 10.37. I am currently finishing up a lot of the projects that I have. I've done like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten items. I was on live. I'm sure some of you saw it. I was just on live at night. You can watch it on my channel. It's somewhere there. But I was just working on fish up items. I sold a mushy pop. And that's it. But let's keep this day going. Okay, it's 11.13. I don't know where I left off the last time. I sold uh, two small mushy pops and a big mushy pop. Mushy pops seem to be the most popular items I'm selling. I am currently working on a new cheeky beaky to get that situated. I've made like 15 items already. Well, finished 15 items. So let me let me just take you to look at the stuff that I have. Ho hold on, hold on. All right, here are the items I have. See these? Whimsy crochet. I keep forgetting. It's like Whimsy Stitch Crochet or Whimsy Crochet. I'm sorry if I keep messing up your name, but the Florina Fidget Flower. I have it linked in the description below. This was a free pattern on Instagram. The Sad Hamster, the Canvas, cable and canvas fidget these have been the most popular followed closely by these here been very popular as you saw I made this oh he looks sad okay there we go fix that no one's bought a leggy frog cheeky beaky's been hanging out the oak and marlow chicken it's very popular to hold but nobody's actually purchased I got the chunky boy Again, all of these patterns are linked in my description below. You see Tofu Turtle, no one's been buying. More of Cheeky Beakies. I keep decreasing the price for these. I'll keep doing that until they're sold. Carrot. I sold a whale that looked like this. So I dropped the price at $5 because I'm ready for them to go. We got the cow, turtle everything else hi how y'all doing update i'm putting my hair back a little bit because it is hot and it's just a big puff at this point so we'll put it in a little bun in the back i know i'm looking kind of rough but this is how it is uh we got about an hour left of the event i've sold let me get the number for you I've had three sales and I've sold four items, five items. So that's one more than the last time. I still have an hour to sell three items to double. Let's see how it goes. Yeah, my grandmother was the best. That was it. After her, nobody else could do 
it's still time. As long as your hands still work. Oh wow. So it's like the Yeah. See, I'm supposed to be wearing my gloves to make sure that it helps with that. And you know, you 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 just gave me a cautionary. You right. I'm I'm supposed to be wearing it. Yes. That, that's how you do it. Exactly. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. Like she has like one of those Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So what I hear you saying is you can get into the crochet. I, that's what I heard, you know. And then this is Chanel yarn. Okay. This is different textures, that's all. Okay. It's a so different Oh yeah, that's that real thick yarn where they use their fingers to do it. Yeah, yeah I don't like using that because it, like it takes that. a lot in your fingers. Okay. Like it your hands get really cramped. Thank you for yeah. You gotta pick it back up, yes. Okay, what's your name? I am Vivian of the Midnight Crafters. Okay. Yes. Today I'm here. I already brought my fruit and veggies. They're always on top over there. Look, I already got mine over there. I and had to go. The, um, the watermelon, I haven't had yellow watermelon in here. Yes. And I said, yo. They had orange the last time I was here. Yes, and it was really sweet. Have you ever been to the Yes. It's down off of Piscataway. They have a lot of stuff down there. Miller Farms having a party down there in Clinton. She said August. Oh, okay. It didn't start out hot. That's what I liked. I still gotta go to the Oh. I didn't go to yoga this morning. <laughs> Look, if you you were better than me, I have yet to actually make my way over there. Oh, they got to Yeah. yeah I've, I've kept saying I'm gonna go and do like a couple laps in the pool. I got the landmark, okay. I, it's okay, I'm, I'm from the country, so I use landmarks. I don't use streets. <laughs> well, like I said, pass over both highways. Both highways. Stay the right lane, don't get on the highway. Okay. And make a right at the next right turn. Across from the police station. Well, you want to make the right turn at the police station. Okay. Just keep straight up and the park is right there. Okay. But who Buddy Addict. Buddy Addict. You like it. Okay. Okay. 
y'all so you're joining me in a different room this surprise surprise is as many of you didn't know this will be my new office so it's very echoey right now because I'm still trying to clean it out as you can see but just to give you a recap of my event this past Saturday let's just get into it so my experience overall it's always I'm going to straighten up as I talk. My experience overall is always a positive experience in the sense that it's a warm atmosphere. People are very happy and pleasant. They always compliment my work whenever they see it and praise, praise me for the excellent craftsmanship that I have. They're always wanting to touch and feel and they're impressed by everything that I have. My most interesting situation, um, I will say I had a crocheter return back. She actually bought a few items since that first time she saw me and she came back. Now I'll explain more as I talk about my best sellers. But she was very impressed and she, was, she and her mom were telling me about a lot of the sensory items that I had, the fidgets and stuff, how they're great for kids who have ADHD and autism and everything. And it really resonated well with me when she said that. And I just kept giving her all my stickers for crochet stuff. It was, it was a sunny day, it was a warm day. It wasn't anything overwhelming though. The thing is, while many people complimented my work, not many people purchased anything. So my best sellers were the Fidget Poppers by Cable and Canvas. I had larger versions for $10 and then I had the smaller versions that I made with Sweet Snuggles Light for $5. It takes me about 20 minutes to whip one up. It really doesn't take much time at all. It, you didn't see my previous week prep, many of you haven't. Only like 80 of you saw it. Thank you, by the way. But it only takes me about 20 minutes to whip one up, so $5 for a small one is nothing too, too bad. I uh, had $40 sales total. I did get some discounts, like the whale. I was ready to get rid of it, so instead of the $10 that I originally had it for, I sold it for five. I also gave the crocheter who stopped by, I gave them a discount as well. So that dropped my take home to $32. I, uh, if you take into account everything that I had to pay for, like the booth fee, my employee fee, the square fees and taxes and everything, I'm uh, in the hole again. And what are you gonna do? What can I say that, I don't want you all to be discouraged, okay? I know this is, I know this is an experience where I've had back-to-back -back flops, but you got to take into consideration the market that I'm working. This is a farmer's market, as I've stated in the beginning. The farmer's market focuses exclusively on produce and fresh items that like bread or items that you consume. Mine are just, they're not consumable. I mean, they're plushies. Many people aren't looking to go to a farmer's market to buy something crocheted. They go for fruit, vegetables. They go for bread. They might go for smell good, like lotions and body butters and stuff like that. But in terms of crocheted, handcrafted items like a plushie, they're not really looking for that at farmer's market. So are they my target audience? Not all the time. I might have some great days where I get 
like a few weeks ago where I had three hundred dollars in sales. But these last couple weeks of July have not really provided. They haven't really provided the boost in revenue that I was hoping for. So what does that mean? Well, I'm still contractually obligated to finish out five more events with them. So I'll still be going to the farmer's market, but I'm not really looking to make much of anything with them. I'm not considering the farmer's market to be a, one of those areas where I'm making large sales. So let's just be going for a good time. I did finish like 13 items while I was there, which was funny because I sold five items and I made 13, which means that I left with eight more items than I came with, but it is what it is. I know for the future, uh, if I'm at the farmer's market, I'm bringing a lot of just crochet projects that I'm working on. That way I'll have something to do for the five hours that I'm there, just in case my target audience doesn't come. But I say all that to say, don't be discouraged by what my experience is. I could just come on here and say, I sold over a thousand dollars worth of supplies, but that wouldn't be honest. And that wouldn't be me. And if all of you who've been my crafty cousins since day one know, I try to give you the most authentic version of me as possible so that you all can understand a real experience of someone who is trying to start a crochet business. That way you can understand from my mistakes what you should and should not do. But I, I don't want you to see my experiences as discouraging. If anything, it should be encouraging you to want to get out there because now you know, demographically, farmer's markets may not be for you depending on where you are. For me, for example, farmer's markets aren't ideal during the summer for me to participate in. Now I know. And I think a lot of the trial and error I'm going through is giving me that experience to know that. I think the frustrating part comes in is because I'm tired a lot there's a lot of stuff going on in the background of my life. If you all would like that, I would be happy to talk about it, but if not, I will keep it focused strictly on crochet. But a lot of things in the background are happening that have really changed a lot of the trajectory of where I saw a lot of things happening for the future. It's okay, I just pivot and keep moving. But we'll see what August has to offer. So. I have several more videos on the works, not just, you know, the markets, but I have a couple more, like the room transformation. This is going to take a little longer. I'm also doing the, the video where I'm seeing how many items I can make by the end of July. Not at the end of July, just yet. I still have a few days that I can still crank some things out. So we'll see how that goes. So I will get those videos to you and I'll see you in those videos next time. But until next time, goodbye, farewell, and please take care.